let's go ahead and get this started. Thank you everybody for joining today's webinar to learn about EasyRx 3D. Uh, specifically, we're gonna focus today on the EasyRx 3D software at any time. If anyone has any questions about any other feature of our product that we're not gonna cover too deep as far as today's webinar uh, goes, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thomas or I are more than happy to give any personalized demo to show any particular feature of our software in more detail. But again, today we're gonna to be covering mostly 3D. Go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Marcus O'Leary. I am the territory rep that handles uh, the Western Territory, which is basically Colorado and everything west of it. While Thomas Williams, my colleague, is the Eastern Territory manager that handles everything uh, east of Colorado or Texas and Eastern. If again, if you ever have any questions, uh, email us, call us. We love, love to connect with you and talk about anything that we can help with. We're gonna cover again our EasyRx 3D software, but I do know there's a couple people that might have joined our webinar um, that may be new customers or potential customers or existing customers. So we're gonna do a quick little recap on our core features of our product. And then again, focus more on 3D at some point. Um, so the core of EasyRx is the universal lab prescription form and the digital workflow management dashboard to basically better track uh, back up a little bit to submit, track, and manage all the prescriptions that are submitted to your commercial labs, your in-house lab, and we can even help track things like Invisalign and SureSmile to make sure that you're staying on top of the appliances as far as have they been submitted to the lab, have they received it, are they working on it, have they shipped the item back to us, things like that. We also, based on customer demand and just the way the industry has been progressing, we developed our EasyRx 3D software to help with optimization, trimming of the file, basing the file, and labeling the file that can be sent easily to your 3D printer. And this is going to be the big portion that we're going to be talking about today. Something we've released in the last couple of years is also a bracket removal module that allow you to digitally remove brackets off the model so that you could uh, provide possibly same day uh, D-band delivery of retainers or any other purpose that you could think of for bracket removal to be used for. Bracket removal has been a really hot topic the last couple of years here. And even um, <clears throat> we've acknowledged that speeding up the process to digitally remove these brackets is a pretty huge thing here. A lot of people are looking forward to that kind of advancement. So with that said, just within the last few months, we've also released an automated bracket removal module. So we have two versions and I'll be covering that today as far as how you can remove brackets using our manual version of bracket removal and how our automated version of our bracket removal module works. We also have an easier liner tracking system, uh, a form to help manage your various batches as far as your clear aligners, along with tracking those cases. Give me a second here. I see that there's a question coming over. In short, for questions, forgot to bring this up when I started the session here. If there are any questions, please don't hesitate to post those questions in our chat through the Zoom meeting. My colleague, Thomas Williams, will be addressing some of those questions while in the webinar during, um, during the demo, and then some of these we may even leave at the end here. Um, so I'm gonna go back to showing software. We're gonna cover some of these questions either during the demo or at the end here. Uh, to go back to our easier liner tracking system, uh, this is a form to help basically manage your various batches. So if you've uh, created a treatment plan for your in-house aligners where you have these various batches and you wanna break them up, certain set of printed out initially, maybe a couple others uh, printed out a couple months later, this is one of the things that we've helped to uh, help track that and manage those things. And we are actually hosting a webinar. Um, our next one, I believe, is next week or the week after that's going to be covering specifically this particular function. But let's get back to talking about EasyRx 3D. Um, why EasyRx 3D? Why is it a practice who'd want to bring this into their practice? Um, and I've thought of a couple things here I'd like to highlight. The first thing is with EasyRx being 100% cloud-based, um, that's the first thing where it works easily with EasyRx's digital workflow. In short, it works with the prescriptions and the dashboard. Um, with the software being cloud-based, there's no local software to download or install physically on your computer. It works entirely in Chrome, Safari, Firefox, and Internet Explorer. Chrome, Safari, and Firefox are the most common nowadays. They work really, really fast and smooth. 
Um, but in short, um, any computer from anywhere, you'll be able to open up just right through the browser. Another little benefit of our cloud-based software is the uh, some 3D softwares out there need a GPU or more specifically a gaming computer to open up and use the 3D software. And with ours, since it is cloud-based, that is not a requirement. Uh, so basically just about any computer can open up our 3D software through the web browser. Another benefit with it being in the cloud is you can access the EZRX 3D software from really anywhere in the world that has a decent internet connection. It's just like opening up Facebook and accessing your Facebook profile. I'm gonna to show today how there's a way to quickly trim based on label a model in under 30 seconds, maybe even faster. I think if I time myself, I might be able to get that under 20 seconds. Um, and that's gonna be one of our basic models, uh, uh, trim models I'll show you in just a bit. Another benefit is the permanent storage of your prep files and there's no local backup required. So the model that you prep today could be very easily accessed and reprinted a year from now or two years from now, five years from now and so on. And of course, our software is very fast, simple and efficient. And you'll see that here in just a bit how that all ties together. I've also created another slide next is the integrations that we have with some of the 3D printers that are out there in the dental community. There's the printers from the Form Labs, there's printers from Envision Tech, Sprint Ray, NextDent, and MyCraft. We have a great bridge that allows from EZRX to be able to send the files directly to their softwares from these different printer manufacturers to save you, the end user, the need to export, import, or drag and drop, or any of the manual ways of transferring files. And then, of course, there's also the cleanup of those files. You know, if you've exported to your desktop, you got to remember to go in there and clean the file off your desktop. So having a bridge provides a nice seamless connection from one product to another. And again, this doesn't mean you can't use a printer from uh, even eBay or Amazon, um, but having some of these other ones from the industry that are uh, working aggressively for, for us here, having the bridge just makes things a little easier. You'll see how that comes in together in just a bit. I'm going to show this slide here at the very end, just showing our contact information again. Um, but now let's go ahead and talk about some software. So with EZRX, <clears throat> uh, some of you are familiar with the EZRX dashboard as far as how to create a script and how to manage scripts. So I'm gonna quickly just a uh, quick overview for anyone that has not seen this dashboard so they can kind of see what this is all about. Um, this is our dashboard to be able to create prescriptions, submit them to the various labs and then see what the statuses of these prescriptions are. So for example, you'll see a list of scripts with unique prescription ID numbers. You'll see a list of patient names you'll see a status of these prescriptions as far as have they been submitted, have they been received back from the lab, have they been completed by the in-house lab, have they been checked in by the lab, and the various statuses just so that one from one screen you can see at any given time what the status of these appliance prescriptions are. And again, if you have any interest in learning more about this, if you're not familiar with this product, please reach out to Thomas or I, we're more than happy to go over it. But we're gonna go ahead and talk about 3D today. So I'm gonna go straight to my in-house lab dashboard. I'm gonna go ahead and open up one of our prescriptions here. And from here, we'll see our prescription for a Holly retainer, our notes and so on. And our EZRX 3D software can be opened directly from the prescription form. This is one way to open up our 3D software. And I'll show you another way where you could actually use 3D um, without being tied to a prescription form also, if that's something that you would like to do. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at this upper EZRX optimized scan that came in from iTero here and it's been optimized. We're gonna click the edit button here. And to touch base on what optimization does is Anytime you import an STL into our 3D software, we will go in and auto-optimize the file. In short, we look at the file and we try to smoothen out the surface and try to fill any holes that we may see in the structure. Um, so you'll see here, this model is very smooth and generally you won't see any weird random holes anywhere. The very first step when using our 3D software is the orientation. Over here on the right side is the orient model button where you click this blue button here, and just in short, everything that's blue is a, is a button or an action within EZRX. So again, the very first step is orienting the model. So we're gonna click this button, orient model, gonna click a point on the left molar, 
a point between the first interiors and a point on the right molar, just like so. After you've done your orientation, you'll be able to move on to the next step as far as trimming your model. And currently, <clears throat> when I'm uh, changing the view of this model, you'll see I'm actually clicking on the surface of the model and now I'm just moving my mouse up and down and so on. There are other, some other options over here on the left side that you can quickly view the front of the model or the back of the model or one of the sides. So there's some quick view buttons there. I generally use those pretty quickly just so it kind of set me back to uh, standard front view if I want to see that. And now going to, again, choosing your trim options. I'm going to do this in two steps. I'm going to show an easy way to trim a model and then I'm going to circle back and show you kind of a custom way to trim the model. So the very first one is the easy one. I'm gonna click this button called Easy Base. When you click that button one time, it's gonna add this horizontal cutting plane to our workspace. And what this basically is gonna allow us to do is move this cutting plane so that anything under the blue is gonna be kept and everything above the gray is gonna be cut off. And in reality, for a simple cut like this, this is all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna choose the next base type option as far as if you're gonna do a regular base or a solid base, and then you hit add base. So circling back, I mentioned how you could trim and base a model in under 30 seconds. This is basically the fast way to trim a model if you're not trying to do anything uh, specific or custom. So you'll see there in five seconds, maybe less, it's trimmed the model based on that horizontal cutting plane that I used <clears throat> and added a solid base. And then from here, if I wanted to add a label, you have your add label section and your various label options. But I'm gonna come back to this because we're gonna go ahead and now show another way to trim the model and really cover some of the other options that you see in our 3D software. So we're gonna close this and open up another scan. Just open up the same one, click edit. Same thing, we're gonna orient the model first one click and then a click on the left molar, first interiors and the right molar. And now we're gonna go ahead and trim this model so that this time around, maybe I wanna include some of the soft palette there. To do so, this orange dotted line is what's called the default trim path. And to adjust this trim path, you can do this two different ways. One is grabbing the little orange dots and moving the dots to adjust the trim path one dot at a time. The other way is redrawing the trim path. To do so, you click this button called Easy Model Trim one time. You hold your shift key on your keyboard and then with your left mouse button, you start drawing the path and wherever your mouse goes is where the path is gonna go. And you can adjust the orange dots afterward, which I generally do. Um, and then, uh, so I'll come back to that. And then from here, I'm gonna unselect shift, I'm gonna rotate the model to a different view, I'm gonna continue holding shift to continue my path. So again, with my left mouse button, I'm gonna again include some of the soft palette and then come around just like so. And then unselect shift, go ahead and rotate the model to a different view and continue my path. And basically I wanna finish where I started. And a little tip here is when you're doing the path, in my experience, it's best to basically go with the flow of your direction. Uh, so if you're going clockwise or counterclockwise, continue going that same direction and worry about adjusting your orange dots at the end is how I generally have used the software, but there are many different ways to use EasyRx 3D depending on how you wanna use it. But in my experience, that's always been the best. So now that I have my default or I have my new trim path created, now I'm gonna go ahead and take a look in three dimension and see if there's any of these orange dots that I wanna adjust, which is gonna coincide and change my path. Like this right here is not kind of a natural curve here. So maybe I wanna go ahead and fix this. Maybe put that right about there and then go ahead and take a look at the other views and make sure I'm not cutting anything else off. I don't wanna necessarily cut off. Looking good. So now that this trim path has been created, everything inside of the trim path will be kept and everything outside of the trim path will be cut off. We'll go into our next base options. So again, we can do our regular base or a hollow base. This time around, I'll do a hollow base because we've done a, a solid one earlier. 
The next thing here is you can choose your base height. So we have our default options as far as two millimeter, six millimeter, and so on. You can customize the base height also if you want to do something like a three millimeter base height, you can totally do so. And now that we've chose hollow with a base height of four millimeters, the next thing we're going to choose is our wall thickness. How thick are the walls going to be when we're hollowing the inside portion out? So we'll go ahead and choose maybe two and a half millimeters. And since I'm turning on some of these options, I'm also going to turn on the options for the drain holes and chamfer base. And I'll explain what those are in just a bit. Now we'll hit add base. This process takes roughly 15, 20 seconds. Um, it's, it's a little more complicated than a simple solid base because of course the inside portion has been hollowed out. And I've also chose some options as far as our base options there for drain holes and chamfer base. So 15, 20 seconds or so for it to process, give or take. <clears throat> While this is processing, we are gonna cover some of the other functions in our software as far as artifact removal, bracket removal, and our refinement tools. I'll bring up another scan that's gonna make sense for this. So let's almost let's get back to what we're working on here. So awesome, now we'll see that based on our custom trim path, so kind of jagged as far as uh, not everywhere my mouse went there, and then including some of the soft palette, just like so. Followed our trim paths, added the base using a hollow option. So the inside portion has been hollowed out. The base height was set to four millimeters, which is gonna look at the lowest point of our model, which would have been that, that little part right there. So four millimeters and then averaged out. And then some of these base options I turned on for drain holes and chamfer base, the drain holes are these little notches right here. So there's a notch there, there's a notch here, and there's a notch right here on the other side. And these drain holes are used for a couple different purposes. One, um, when printing, <clears throat> when you're printing and you're flipping the model vertically, a location for the resin to drain out of. Uh, another purpose for these is like pry points uh, to basically get the screwdriver under them and pop them off a print plane. And another one is like creating, a, when you're doing your vacuum suction, giving you a little bit of spacing so some of the pressure can get relieved from the, from the inside portion out. The other option, chamfer base, is this angle in the back. And this was actually added just this past summer. And customers asked us, we'd love if you gave us a chamfer option because I'm printing horizontally, maybe I want to have a little spot again to kind of pop the model off the print plane. So totally up to you as the end user. If you turn those options on, I'm doing some of these base options. We're gonna go ahead and do another one. And I'm gonna show some of the other options there, what you could do with a model. So same model, same thing, we're gonna do the orientation. What I wanted to focus on this time around is show the button for vertical cutting plane and the angle base option, which I didn't cover in the other sessions here. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose my vertical cutting plane. And what you do here is you click once and then you click a start point and an end point of where the plane's gonna be. And this will allow you to basically cut off um, any back portion of the model or square it off or maybe you'll get help with uh, maybe cutting off the molars if you wanted to or the wisdom teeth. So that's basically how that vertical cutting plane works is you click once and then a start point and point where the plane's going to be and if you click the little handles this will allow you to adjust the angle of that plane. Just like so. Let's go ahead and do the angle base option now. So we're gonna click the easy base option. It's gonna add a horizontal cutting plane to our workspace, what we showed a little bit ago. We're gonna move this down, just like so. And this time around, I'm gonna click the angle base option. It's gonna change orange like so. And that basically shows you this is an option where allow you to go ahead and start tilting the plane itself depending on what square, what angle you're looking to do. So great options there to do an angle basis and cutting off a vertical plane on the back. Gonna move along here, choose my base type of regular, add base. And we're gonna see a perfect base here created based on our cutting planes that we've created, just like so. 
pretty slick. We'll move on to the next part of our 3D software as far as labeling a model. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna wanna put a name right there. So to do so, we have our add labels section. Currently patient name is selected. You also have the option to choose some of these other options that you see there as far as uh, prescription ID, patient initials, practice name, and so on. Some of the default options that you can choose. You can even type in a custom text box, which, which I'll do as a second label. But for my first label, where I want patient name. I generally leave this little font size feature turned on auto so that uh, we resize when I'm moving the little handles for positioning. And I'm gonna go ahead and this time around do the engraving option. And you can show, totally change that to emboss if you like to too. But let's go engrave these models and to now put our models on or put our labels onto the model, we need to tell EasyRx 3D where to position these items. So there's this button right here, position first label. You click that button one time to turn the feature on. Then you click a start point and an end point where the label is gonna show. This little blue preview label sitting there can be resized and readjusted now. So if I click any of these little blue handles, that will allow me to reposition and resize. On the other side, I wanna add this other label. And this time around, I'm gonna unselect patient name and I'm gonna put my mouse in custom text box. So we're gonna type in today's date. And again, you can type anything in there that you like. So position second label, turn the feature on, click a start point and an end point where the label will be displayed. Resize, reposition. As soon as you're happy with the where they're placed, go ahead and hit the add label button. Wait a few seconds for the label to be added. And now those labels are now been engraved into the model. There's our date and there's our name. If this model is ready to rock, we're going to hit the save model button. Oh, I see a little artifact over there, but we'll come back to that. <clears throat> Anyhow, we'll save model because I want to focus on some of the other functions on the next model. Um, and then from here, you're going to put in a name of whatever you want to name that file. So you do something like finished re retainer or um, today's date, whichever it may be, just so that kind of pops out on the list of files so you know this is your prep model. This model is going to get saved to the prescription form since we opened it up from the prescription form along with the patient files so that we can access this time, access this file at any time in the future. Almost done. Perfect, the file's been saved. I'm going to close 3D going to refresh the prescription form and we'll see that there's a new file there with 210-2021 added to our list. At this time, if I was ready to print this model, there's two ways to get this file opened up in your printer software. One is from the prescription form. You'll see this little download icon. Click on that download icon. It's going to download it to your local computer. Uh, do note if you have what's called file solution set up correctly, like for example, I anytime I open up or download an STL file, my default viewer for this file is the RayRare software, which drives Sprint Ray. So that is something you can set up. This also helps in a situation where maybe you have one of those printers that aren't part of our integration list, um, you know, off brand from Amazon, whatever it may be. Um, what you can do is set their little default software up so that it does open up the files natively. So in that instance, RayWare is currently selected, hit open with, click OK, and eventually I'll see RayWare open up that model that I just selected. It's like so. Another, another way you can send these files to your printer software is we have this EasyRx 3D drop-down list, and then you have view STL print list. Now if I open up our print list, this is gonna show a list of files you prepped using EasyRx 3D so that you can easily select one file or multiple files and send those directly to the Sprint Ray Envision Tech or Forum Labs printer software. Good way to send multiple files at once. Another purpose for this little print list manager is will help you manage your print jobs. So if you have multiple technicians using the printer or you have multiple locations and multiple printers, this is a good way to kind of track, all right, did I print a such and such model versus another one? And then when they're printed, you check those boxes off so that hopefully they don't get reprinted by accident.
We'll close our VUS steel print list. We're going to go back to our prescription form. And as time around, I'm going to open up a file that has brackets so we can talk about some of our other functions in 3D. So there's this file right here I'm going to open. <clears throat> so this is my model that has some brackets on it. That's a good model because it's a good representation of some of the situations you guys are going to see in a production environment where you have a scan or some brackets are very easy all by itself sitting on top of the tooth. And then you have some other brackets where maybe they're pushed up against the gum or if maybe the gum is um, swollen, whatever it may be, and you have a situation like that. So to recap, first thing again is we're always going to want to orient the model over here on the right side, orient model, click point left molar, first interiors on the right molar. Just for the hell of it, I'll go ahead and base this thing real quick. I saw a question about changing the angle of our easy base. That's totally can be done. You just click angle base, grab the handles to change the tilt, whatever it may be. Move on to the next step. Base type, add base. Very, very quick. Now let's talk about bracket removal, artifact removal, and refinement tools. So artifact removal, granted, the scan doesn't have much artifact on it, but it does have something that the artifact removal is going to work great on, something like that. So I'm going to call that artifact, and I want to remove it. <clears throat> to do so, you can hit this highlight artifact button to turn the tool on. You can change your brush size if you want it small or large. I'll leave it on large for now. And then you hold your shift key with your left mouse button, you paint brush the artifact that you want to remove. Anything painted in orange like so will be removed and I hit remove artifact. So remove artifact, anything orange will be gone. Easy enough. Now let's talk about bracket removal. Gonna change our to our front view here. There's the select brackets button. This is where you hit this button one time. It turns the bracket removal feature on. I wanna focus on this bracket. I'm gonna hold the shift key on the keyboard. Then with my left mouse button, we're gonna start creating this little orange path, kind of similar how to do how we do a uh, easy trim. You hold shift and you leave, use your left mouse button to basically create the action. So I've created my little orange path. And what I'm basically attempting to do is keeping the inside portion of this orange path away from the bracket, away from the path. And with this instance, this tooth, it's easy to do. I can go way wide like I did. Hit remove bracket. Oops, remove bracket. Wait a few seconds and you'll see that the bracket's been cleanly removed off the tooth. And in this instance, it's awesome because there's gonna be zero refinement needed for that surface. You'll see the structure of the tooth is great. And you go ahead and do this to the next one. Some people ask, can I do my little orange pass one at a time, then hit remove bracket? Unfortunately, you cannot. You must do this one at a time because the tool's focusing on what's inside the orange pass. So if we had 10, you know, orange pass created, that's what the software we're going to be able to do. Can't figure out, you know, which one am I supposed to focus on? <clears throat> You'll see that with this particular model, most of these teeth are really, really easy. After this one, I'm going to get to the molars, which are a little more complicated. So great. So as you see, those are very, very easy to work on. Now let's talk about something like this. So with this particular situation, when I start to create my little orange path, you'll see that a lot of the tooth I can capture but right about here, I don't have any tooth. It's kind of going into the, into the gum line or the gingival margin. So I'm gonna try my best to move this little orange path around that particular situation. And now I have this little hook here on top of the gum. Can't go you know, through it, gotta go around it. So we're gonna go around it and continue our path. That's the best I can really do with this situation. We hit remove bracket. <clears throat> A lot of the work's gonna be done, it's gonna look great, but there's gonna be some additional work needed depending on the fit 
that you're looking for as far as your appliance goes. Um, this is something where maybe this is good enough. And some of you will say, well, not good enough for a retainer. So what do we do here? So this is where some of our refinement tools come in. And since I'm really focusing right now on this little gingiva margin, this is what I want to recreate. The tool for this is the margin tool over here on the left side. So if I click that margin button to turn the tool on, I'll see that the tool enables where now I can adjust the size and the depth. So the size initially is how big or how wide the tool is gonna behave and what kind of changes it's gonna do. So are we doing like a 0.25 millimeter or 0.48 millimeter round tool? I'm gonna keep it right about 0.25 millimeter and you'll see what that is, what that means in just a bit. The next thing you can also do is adjust how uh, what the depth of the tool is going to be. You know, is it going to take away 0.24 millimeters um, each stroke, or is it going to take away, you know, 0 0.60 millimeters, whatever it may be. Now that I've set my size and my depth to, as you kind of see, right about the maybe 10, 15% mark on each tool, then I go into now holding the shift key, and then with my left mouse button, go ahead and recreating that ginger of a margin the best I can. The width is that blue circle. And of course the depth is how much is taken away. If I go ahead and adjust the size and adjust the depth, then it's gonna be of course a lot more aggressive depending on those settings. The next tool that we're gonna cover is the smoothing tool. So in this instance, maybe I wanna smoothen out that jagged edge I created. Again, you can change the width of the brush or the stroke, and then come in and smoothen out that edge. Now we'll talk about build, carve, block out, and cut out. Build is adding just a little bit of material to the structure that you're focusing on. So again, you can adjust the width and the depth, how much it's gonna add. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it to say 0.25 millimeter wide. And I want you to add maybe 0 0.20 millimeters worth of material each time I use the tool. So now we're gonna go ahead and you'll see that it's adding 0.25 millimeters with the width and about 0 0.20 millimeters with the thickness. The next tool is carving, which is the opposite of build. Again, you can adjust your size and your depth. You go ahead and use the tool accordingly. <clears throat> so we have our build, we have our carve tool. The next tool is block out and cut out. So block out is used for mostly what I'm hearing from customers is like lingual uh, spacing or lingual retainers. So we're gonna go ahead and move the model right about here. I'm gonna choose the block out option. Choose maybe 0.75 millimeters with the width and add maybe 0.25 millimeters or 0.40 millimeters with the material. <clears throat> now using the block out tool, I'm gonna do something like a lingual spacing here. And if I go ahead and pass again, it's just gonna add just that much more material based on the settings that you chose there. Cut out, it's gonna work again, opposite as block out. So we'll choose the cut out option, size and depth. And this would be used for, from what I understand, like doing maybe you're placing an appliance and you wanna create a little bit of space for uh, some type of cut out or for like a class or something. So you can basically come in and do something like this, or maybe there's a little hook right there that you want to create a little bit of spacing for. So that's our manual BRAC removal and some of the refinement tools included with it. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about automated BRAC removal. Before I do so, I want to focus again on one of these more complicated two, just to kind of show you some things to expect maybe on the other side. Um, right about here. 
Gonna select our brackets. And I'm doing this so you guys can see a comparison of the manual versus the automated one. And we'll focus on this particular tooth because this one's probably one of the more complicated ones. Hit remove bracket. Okay, so of course we'd still need to do some refinement in there, but it's done a lot of the work for us. Um, we're gonna go and open up a scan that's gone through ABR now. We'll leave this one up so we can compare it. So there's our, on our list, you'll see that there's the original that came in with brackets that was already optimized. And then there's a new file added to the list that with the name bracket removal added to it. And how our EasyRx3D software is gonna basically do is uh, you have an option to have all scans ran through ABR where it automatically identifies scans with at least four brackets, no wires and remove the brackets for you. We also have the option you can turn it on and have control of it. It's actually an update we released uh, just this week that gives the user the control where it just scans everything or you tell it, you know, kind of like on demand. Um, so we'll train you out. Well, you know, we'll ask you and give you a rundown how to, what's the best situation scenario and which setting to set it to depending on your needs. Uh, but do note, you can totally control if you want all of them done or just some of them or on the fly. But we're going to go back to our file here. So there's the one that's gone through ABR or automated bracket removal. Click on edit. First thing is we're just going to look at the scan and take a look at the original. Focus on these teeth right here. So these are the ones I removed manually. These are still placed. This scan is, or this tooth here is another one I did manually. Let's bring up the automated version. And as you can see here, automation has done, you know, depending again on the fit and finish, you could say 90% of the work, maybe 95% of the work, maybe 100% of the work, depending on the results that you're looking for. But all the brackets have been removed off the incisors very cleanly, canines removed very cleanly. And now let's talk about this particular tooth, the one I removed myself and compare it against the ABR version. So there's this tooth right there. Oh, change it so the view is a little closer to, to each. So <clears throat> ABR is gone and remove the bracket. You'll still need to do some of the cleanup there which you can you totally can do with our refinement tools, but it gives a good representation of how much time ABR in the long run could really save. Um, for example, this particular scan, and I don't do this every day, but I would say probably take me about eight minutes to kind of clean up, maybe 10. This scan, I could probably clean up, send, oops, the other way around. This scan, take a minute to clean up because I just need to clean up the digital margins while this one here would probably take me about eight or 10 minutes to clean up. So we've developed both modules really based on, you know, what, um, how many of you guys do, you know, if it's one of the situations where if you're only doing a handful a month, maybe the manual version is best sense because uh, that, you know, 10 minutes of processing time, maybe may not make a big difference for your practice. If you do a lot of BRAC removal or thinking of doing a lot of BRAC removal for something like same day D-bonds, um, then the ABR version, the automated version makes a lot of sense because it saves so much time by the time you start multiplying how many models you're doing on a given basis. Thomas, did you have something to provide? Yeah, um, Heather was going to ask if you could show ABR again, just the yeah. workflow with it. Yeah, so in general, Heather, okay. when you attach a scan to a prescription, if you have it turned on so it scans everything, again, we'll train you on the difference, is you have your original on your list, and then there'll be a new file created with the name added, BRAC removal. So there's really... When you have it turned on, so every scan is done, you don't have to do anything. It's just going to do it. Scan's imported, and there's our new file created. If you're using the on-demand feature, there'll be a little checkbox when you're filling out the prescription form that you check off to tell it to process through ABR. If you've forgotten to check the little box off when you're filling out the script, then you can actually circle back to the script, and there's going to be a little checkbox right there where you can either turn it on or turn it off if you forgot to turn it on while filling it out. So um, again, we'll train you, you know, the difference on how to use either 
full-time automation or on-demand automation would be the best way to look at it. Um, but yeah, as far as the way the files get created, this is the new one. That's the original. I'll start over and open those up again here. So our original and our one that went through ABR. We'll focus on some of the more complicated situations. So really, really good results for automation. Saves a ton of time. So again, with this one, you still might want to do cleanup, but since 90% of the work's been done, the cleanup should take no time at all. Go ahead and choose your base option, save the file, get it back to your prescription form. <clears throat> Before I open up our webinar to questions, I want to show one other way you could use 3D. And this is using 3D outside of a prescription form. Uh, depending on your different needs, this might be something you're interested in. So from our main dashboard, you can click on EasyRx 3D and click on this view patient list. And you can add a patient manually to the EasyRx database without a prescription. So you just click add a patient, type in their name, do what you need to do. And after the patient's been created, you can open up the file, patient file, and this is basically what a patient file in EasyRx looks like. You'll see a list of demographic information, You'll see their ITERO scans if they need to be imported here. But most importantly, you'll see a list of your files all by themselves. And if I wanted to open up EasyRx 3D without being connected to a prescription, this is how I do so. Find the file that I want to open, go in and click on the file, click on edit. <clears throat> and then use EasyRx 3D just like I showed for the last 30 minutes here. Go ahead and do what you need to do with the scan. Trim it, base it, label it, save it back to the patient file and get save model. What's gonna happen is gonna get that file added to this list and then that file will be on this list that you can send directly to your Sprint Ray, Forum Labs, Envision Tech or so on, or go back up to view STL print list. <clears throat> so I just wanna kind of quickly highlight that a little bit. And I have, uh, I know I've spoken with a couple customers that are using our EasyRx 3D all by itself with no prescriptions. Um, not many, but there are a couple out there. So I kind of wanna highlight that. Now we are 45 minutes into our webinar. I'm going to leave the next 10 minutes for questions. If anybody has any questions, let's go ahead and put them in our chat screen here. I'm going to go ahead and glance, see if anything wasn't covered by Thomas. And Thomas, if there's any questions you could think of that I should cover, let me know. Let's see. There's a question about can you block out gaps between teeth? Uh, the short answer is yes, you can. So using the block out tool, I have closed the gap. It's a little bit of work because you got to stretch, you know, basically kind of got to, here, I'll bring up that scan again here since we're in the session. Let's see, what's the upper? Oh no, is that one of the teeth, <clears throat> the brackets? So there's a nice little gap between there. Now, this isn't the most smoothest thing in the world, but that's a huge gap to try to cover. But I have used bracket or uh, refinement to do that. <clears throat> okay. So with this one, this is a small gap. This will be a little easier to work with. So we have our block out feature, go ahead and crank out the tool. So it's pretty aggressive and then use that to try to close this up or maybe even to build the add material. So basically you're just basically stretching, I'm trying to get it to you know, bring more data in and add a little bit at a time. And then he come in and use a smooth tool to kind of smooth that out and get that get that block out covered up a little bit. So it takes a little bit of work, but it can totally be done. <clears throat> See, there's another question. Uh, block outs, toggling the teeth at the time. 
uh, to add a study model at this time. We don't support the study model bases. And the question, ability to block out space between teeth has been limited. I mean, it's <clears throat> like I showed, it's, it's, it's designed to add a little bit of material at a time. So, I mean, um, totally great for the input if we needed to add, you know, some additional, like maybe we need to crank this up and allow you guys to add, you know, tilde millimeters with the material, four millimeters with the material. And that would probably be a way to solve that. I'll bring that up to our developers. Marcus, try changing the size too, increasing yeah. that all the way up, and that, yeah. that may help. I think actually, I've been talking about this, I think I've used build more for this than probably block out. I've totally closed this gap before. Yeah, so this is build. And then I'll come in and take away some of the build that I did. Oh. Take a little more work, but did add did close that up pretty pretty good. Yeah, I think we've addressed the questions presented. I think I'll end this webinar today just showing for anybody that may not have 3D already what the options are for upgrades go. So if you go back to our website, userxcloud.com, you can always go up to practice, pricing, and features. And for an existing user that may have EasyRx and seeing that that EasyRx 3D button may not be in their software, and you'll know real quickly, you'll see that button or you won't. That basically highlights that you may be in our standard plan. For someone that's interested in using the EasyRx 3D module that may be on standard, you'll see here that it's less than $30 a month, basically from our basic plan to our next tier plan that has the basing software. And then the premium package also includes the 3D basing software, but one major difference it also includes is the in-house lab dashboard. Be able to track cases that are assigned to your in-house lab and stay on top of all those cases. If anybody has any additional questions about pricing and maybe um, ask about pro rate of an upgrade, whatever it may be, please reach out to Thomas or I. We're more than happy to show, those in, show the details there. I'll put my contact information up here again. And at this point, we are going to go ahead and conclude the webinar. Thank you, everybody, for joining. We really appreciate you spending the last hour with me. Hopefully, I was able to show something you might have not known about EasyRx or EasyRx 3D. Um, and thanks again. We're going to go ahead and close our webinar now. Have a great day.